Our first guest is a self-taught entrepreneur and founder of Miami Modest Fashion Week. Uh, she's gonna, she's born and raised in a small village in Malaysia and has been living in the U.S. for 31 years. So please welcome to the show, Norsham Mohammed Hyphen Garcia, mashallah. Welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much for having me. Now look, before we go any further, it looks very bright where you are. What time is it over there? Actually, believe it or not, it's two o'clock. In the afternoon. Right now. Yes. In the afternoon, fantastic. Well, look, cool. uh, and before we go even any further, you know, tell us about your name. Norsha Mohammed Hyphen Garcia. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> yes, you're right. Uh, my name is Arabic. Uh, is Nur Sham, as you know that the meaning is sunshine. Yep. Nun Waura Shim Alip Min, Nur Sham. MashaAllah. And Muhammad, of course, my father, my late father. Alhamdulillah. Garcia, I'm married to uh, such amazing person. He's a Spaniard and Latin based here in Miami. Wow. wow. It Spanish. can only happen in America. Only in America. <laughs> do, you, do you speak Sp uh, Pablo Espanola? No, only poquito. Oh, poquito. 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 <laughs> obviously, you speak Malay, I'm assuming. English, obviously. Anything else you might have picked up language-wise in Miami? So multicultural. You're right. You're right. Miami is actually is such an amazing uh, place, very international, very vibrant. It's almost like totally different from different part of the uh, United States. Um, and... Unfortunately, I cannot speak. Um, you know, I'm still learning how to improve my English, but that's why I want to stick Listen, right now. You, Only you, two languages. You sound fantastic. <laughs> you sound fantastic. Now, look, before we go into your particular career, the minute I see Miami and modesty, they don't really go hand in hand because of certainly what we've seen on television in our lifetimes and all the films. So that, that's, that must have been an interesting challenge to put together. You know what's so interesting? People have been asking me because, as you know, that um, I think everybody from different parts of the world know Miami is a place that where, um, you know, it's a very opposite of Madrid, mm, mm. right? But I think that in order for us to uh, to lead or to go somewhere, um, you know, it's like you do not want to go somewhere that's already... Um, you know, saturated and all that kind of things. Um, I, Miami is a perfect place, believe it or not, um, because if people invest their time to understand the culture, the people, um, and there's a lot of opportunities to explore here. Mm. Um, and also the strategic uh, location of Miami, we are close by to Caribbean, uh, to Latin America, to Canada, even you guys can come over to Miami only like few hours, right? So it's a very strategic place. Miami is have their own own DNA. Wow, yeah. <laughs> such a such a beautiful I, transition. I, isn't it, I just remember it to... from uh, say hello to my little friend. You know, from, from uh, Scarface, Scarface and the Cubans arriving in Miami. And that, that, that was, for me, was what Miami looks like, subhanAllah. <laughs> <laughs> There's certainly a transition there. We know you're, you have an involvement uh, with the Miami Modest uh, Fashion Week, talking about modesty. Um, but I just want to backtrack a little bit about your actual career and how you got into it. Because I understand uh, you was into banking before this. Is that right? Sure. Um, bear with me because I can talk a lot of things. That's so why I want to keep track with all the, you know. Go for uh, it, go right. for it. We'll keep you in check, don't worry. <laughs> so basically, uh, you're right. Um, you know, so what led me out of management, uh, uh, first of all, I always want to work for myself for, you know, for a long time. Um, it started actually the transition to, uh, when I moved to um, Miami from Connecticut mm. to start my new life. Um, and and then I found Miami is a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, so very strategic uh, location that I want to explore and utilize my uh, my knowledge, uh, my experience uh, for, you know, here. So I, I mean, you, you were doing quite a lot of, you know, you set your own business consultancy up strategy. Sure. And how did that lead into the, the, the Miami Modest Fashion Week then? Sure, sure. So, you know, for almost 10 years, you know, I was focusing on, on art at first. And 10 years, um, I, mean, and I represent... Did you mention I art? 
Yes, well, that's how just, you can see my... Yeah, I mean, look, just, just for our viewers, because they might think it's one of those Zoom, you know, kid-on backgrounds like I always put behind my meetings to think people I live somewhere else. No. But look, tell us about that piece behind you, because it'll hopefully help us to understand your art journey. It's phenomenal. Sure. It's actually the art behind me is actually uh, by artists from Indonesia. And it's very interesting about this artist as well. Yes, for the last 10 years, um, you know, I basically is totally different things what I've been doing because I was uh, in the banking for over 17 years. When I moved to Florida and I said, I want to do something that totally different. I really want to turn my dream to something that, uh, to reality. So what I did is, I, I think it's too old for me to go to school, <laughs> but basically what I did is I end up work with uh, a few uh, very successful, uh, start with a pop artist. Uh, uh, his name is Romero Rito. And I believe, um, uh, you know, in London, um, a few years ago, they did a few projects over there. Um, I learned about pop. Uh, I have no background about anything about art at mm, first. Mm, but mm. in order for you to learn, um, and you have to start from ground zero, that's what I did. Um, and then I was working um, as a PA, personal assistant, but I'm learning about art and design, the furniture design. Mm. I'm getting to know about... Um, you know, Murano glass. I, I am learning about Vernal Panton, um, uh, Fonasati, and all those. Because back in Malaysia, the only thing I learned only watercolor uh, mm. during my time, you know? So I think that uh, that's what I did. Um, and then in 2000, what, 2014, where I met my, you know, my partner, uh, I mean, my former partner, yeah. where I get involved into sport and entertainment. So for about six years, uh, we I, I was working uh, as an independent agent. We commercialize a lot, like um, a lot of wool, um, you know, uh, license mm. from athlete, from what else, celebrities to team, and some of actually few teams from uh, UK as well. As well, wow. Wow. Um, then we activate special <laughs> event. We're more into like they call a white labels. Uh, basically, we commercialize others. You know, like mm, I think mm. uh, several top uh, agency uh, based in New York. Uh, so from there, that's what I've been doing. Um, so my remark is totally opposite. Um, yeah. So you know, <laughs> what, what what was the jump? What was the kind of turning point to? To go to the other I side mean, of the coin, as they say. I love, I love you asked me about that. Um, it's, it's so funny because for a long time, you know, and for a long time when I came over here when I was 21, and immediately it's almost like my life is like, it's like a microwave. You go and it suddenly becomes so Americanized. You know, I yeah. was working in the banking. Um, so the culture and the whole things, you know, I was very Americanized. But... Back in 2000, uh, four years ago, a group of women entrepreneurs from Malaysia came over to New York. Uh, they actually came over um, for the founder, sorry, the, the president of the women entrepreneurs, actually, she brought over 10 designers mm. to New York. Not not in the New York fashion show, but in um, separate satellite fashion shows. Um, that's that's the first time you know that I realized that something about I'm missing something. Sure. And yet yeah. I commercialized all this big, big, big license in the world, and then I realized that I'm losing myself mm. because the reason I say I'm losing myself, not losing because I lost that. I'm no longer that person, you know, the, the identity that I have before. Sure. You know, and, and I saw this Malaysian designers, they came over, the, the clothing that they've been wearing is very vibrant um, and everything's very unique. And then I do not understand about mothers during that time as well. And until I saw them, for me, the way I look at them is very, it's a very, uh, very gutsy. 
you know, they wear the they wear hijab and more funky than me. You know, what I'm <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm here in in, in another state. And but the, the point I'm trying to say is, um, you know, it's like because in America, don't get me wrong, we are very fortunate because we have a lot of choices. Yeah. Um, but but a lot of mass produce, mm. right? Mm. Um, but I think that uh, something that I realized that that was me. I understand that the clothing. I was when I was seven years old. I make my own dress, what? you know, oh. mm. uh, during Ramadan, you know. And my father told me, if you finish your uh, your Ramadan, your fasting, you have a choice to go and pick your own uh, material and make your design your own clothes. Wow, you know. Mm. So. Such From there, I'm like, oh my God, what am <laughs> I doing? And then when I learn about the industry of modest fashion, sure. how big the modest fashion is, that's made me realize that, you know, I have that. I came from Malaysia. Mm. Um, I'm not sure whether I, I believe you you aware about Dinar Standard. Uh, Dinar Standard, um, for how many years they make a report about the global halal uh, yeah, economy. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge uh, industry out there. It's a huge industry, you know, and and then Malaysia always on the top with um, halal cosmetic, um, you know, halal food, mm. uh, fan tech, um, um, a lot of other industry. And what what, so, what what was it like to pull all that together and the event itself? Um, actually, it's so it's so interesting. Um, the event, are you talking about my own event? Yeah. So what was it like so to have that whole Miami Modest Fashion Week? You know, that, that must be a lot of content to put together for the week. You know, I'm 50, I'm over 50. No. <laughs> I'm over no, 50 years so, old, No right? way. Yeah, Look, yeah. I, I'm over 50. People say that to me as well. No way. So the content <laughs> is the journey, the experience that I have before from the art itself. That's why the unique about Miami Modest compared to most of other... Um, I'm not trying, um, you know, I, I'm, I want to make sure that my my event uh, is uh, something's not just a fashion show. Um, I want to educate people. Uh, that's why I'm bringing about the art itself, the culture, mm. the education. Um, I think it's so important because we, when you talk about fashion show, um, most of the time the fashion show, you go home, you sew the clothing and that's it. But what we want to do, we want more than that. We want people to fall in love. Mm. Um, so, yeah, my knowledge, my knowledge, and also a lot of other people, key people behind there that um, that um, help me as well. Um, I work with a lot of other founders, um, and I think I'm really grateful that I have a lot of these people behind me. Uh, they're very helpful they're very uh kind enough to share some of their experience their knowledge with me yes. i was just going to say you've had such a fantastic phenomenal uh transition for all these different uh careers and industries and it's kind of all amalgamated to one thing and yeah, I can see you're a very uh, creative person, very fashionable person. Um, I just want to touch base on the actual fashion side because what, what Brother Neem said as well, I think it's quite important is Miami is so colourful and so, you know, is diverse and everything, very uh, fashionable. Um, but how, what, what kind of feedback are you getting back from the, the actual modesty side of the fashion that you do? Because it's, it's like two different things, isn't it? It's, it's very, very... It's, it's... I love you asked me that. First of all, believe it or not, a lot of people think that um, nobody going to welcome modest, uh, modesty or modest mm. fashion in Miami, mm. which is, that's not true. Um, people are welcoming, um, and, and th because I received a lot of email from different people, this is about time. Um, and uh, even, even here in Miami, it's actually, they are, for them, it's very fascinating. Um, right. You know, fascinating to see a lot of clothes. It's intriguing, isn't <laughs> you it? You know, it's like yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of clothes. Not about just a lot of, uh, uh, you know, because before this, as you know, that um, Miami is something that you know is very uh, provocative, right? And so mm, to see mm. something very different is for them is, um, um, I think, the plus. 
not only just the clothing, we bring a culture. Yes. You know, that's a part about we bringing, um, we bringing, um, you know, fashion from Indonesia. I work with the founder of Indonesia Modest Fashion Week. I work with Russia. Uh, so the you know different element um, of the modesty or the the, the design that we're bringing, and then and also um, not just the design and also the material itself, you know, and how the material was made. That so that is very fascinating. That's why if you see most of uh, in my talk, and I always tell people about the motif of the the the, uh, the motif um, for example from Indonesia famous with batik or songket mm. songket for example is actually um, it's actually based from Arab uh, you know uh, culture right sure. so because it's actually uh, it's a gold track you know take for take months and months to make that long time ago uh, that kind of concept only uh, the monarchy, the whole, um, you know, sorry, um, only the monarchy wearing it, the royal family wearing it. Mm. But then after that, um, during the weddings, um, people wearing it. So that's only like one in the blue moon, you know, right? But how we want the mainstream, the youngsters to wear it, yeah. right? right? So that's why it's so important, these designers. Designers are so important. They are the ambassador. So um, I think uh, the founder of Indonesia is very, very smart, the way how she make it. She make it mainstream, and she make it very funky. That's mm -hmm. the way how we can educate yeah. to the youngsters. Yeah. Yeah. Now, she already educate that in her country, but my responsibility, how we can educate it to the world. The world, you know. the I mean, Does that make sense? <laughs> there there yeah, can't absolutely. be anything more powerful than, you know, a woman dressed in hijab, you know, the jalbab, and looking really, you know, mashallah, beautiful. Uh, and that, yes. then when you compare that with, as you said, you know, the provocative elements of Miami and someone's... There's just so much more to it, so, so much more powerful. I mean, look, talking about women, you, you've managed to get a lot of women on your team as well. Is that something you aspire to, to try and, you know, promote women, get them into management, to, you know, take the lead and, and you know, be entrepreneurial, so to speak? So, first of all, you know, it's, it's very strange because for the last six years, I've been in the sport entertainment and 95% I'm with men. Mm. Um, and um, but the thing is, for me, when I'm, you know, I'm building Miami Mothers, uh, like I said, you know, um, it's not just a show; it's a business, right? So when I built this, yes, just last two years, I'm very get involved with uh, women, um, and and I'm talking very in daily basis. Um, I'll be honest; I'm very transparent about that. Um, but for me, they are, we are inspired each other. Um, and also for me, uh, when in the business, I don't, I, I don't prefer to put as a gender. Business is business, whether man or woman. Um, for me, that's the way the message and I was, uh, I'm telling most of the people I work with. Um, but, and also I'm not interested for these people inspired just only to be in the management. They have to look into their self that beyond, beyond business. As a Muslim, you know, as a Muslim, and if we believe God created, you know, a lot of things in this world, we have to look into very deep, you know, not just about management. You know, we have to go mm -hmm. beyond that. Go out there, strive for ourselves and challenge ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the way I look at things. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Uh, well, look. <laughs> Bilal, we're going to finish off now. We are indeed. Time running out. We, are, oh no, time we, we, could, we could speak ah. to you all night, mashallah. You've got so much experience. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot going on. Well, look, j just to finish off, uh, Norsham, what, what, what's next on the cards for you? Oh, my God. I have definitely, we're going to have the second year coming soon. And I is in the next few months, and I love to come back. And I want the world to come and support me. Um, you know, and support me and, you know, show the world what what this industry can help. Not just Absolutely. about making money, yeah, yeah, yeah. about how we can bring people 
together, mm. you know, because Islam, Muslim uh, come in different faces, but yet we have, we have purpose yep. in this world. Yep. You know, we come here uh, to this world, uh, have the purpose, and I, I hope every each of us can come together and show our strength together. Inshallah, inshallah. Fantastic. Well, look, Jazakallah well khair for being with us. <laughs> very, very good luck to you for the next yeah. project as well. Keep up the fantastic work. I think you've yeah. motivated a lot of sisters out there, if not Absolutely. brothers, who yeah. are in their 50s, like myself. <laughs> Salaam alaikum. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Salaam alaikum. Live the life.